I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. And now he has gone beyond that. Now the president is saying I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot someone and I cannot be prosecuted for that crime or any crime. In New York City today, the president's lawyers sued Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance and in filing the lawsuit, the president's lawyers told the court the president thus cannot be subject to criminal process for any conduct of any kind while he is serving as president. So according to the president's lawyers, Donald Trump could commit murder. He could commit murder on Fifth Avenue with the whole world watching on TV. And there is nothing law enforcement could do about that as long as Donald Trump is president. The president's lawyers are suing the Manhattan District Attorney to try to block the district attorney's subpoena of President Trump's personal tax returns and business tax returns. That subpoena was not served on Donald Trump. It was served on the accounting firm, Mazars, which prepared those tax returns and has copies of them. The Manhattan District Attorney is conducting an investigation into potential criminal wrongdoing by Donald Trump and his company in the hush money payments to Stormy Daniels in the last month of the presidential campaign, which federal prosecutors in New York called a criminal conspiracy against the United States, which was designed to affect the election. The president's lawyers don't point to a single line in the Constitution to support their position because there is no line in the Constitution that says the president is not subject to criminal process. In fact, the Supreme Court ruled that President Richard Nixon was subject to criminal process when they voted unanimously to enforce a criminal subpoena issued by a special prosecutor who was conducting a criminal investigation of President Nixon. President Nixon then complied with the subpoena and handed over audio tapes that showed the president engaged in a criminal conspiracy. And shortly after handing over those tapes, Richard Nixon was forced to resign the presidency. Richard Nixon resigned the presidency because he was subject to criminal process. And that criminal process closed in on him and forced him to turn over the evidence that condemned him. This is one of those nights when we hope to turn to a constitutional scholar of the highest authority, and we can do that tonight because Harvard Law School's constitutional law professor Lawrence Tribe, who has argued countless cases before the Supreme Court, has agreed to join our discussion. Professor Tribe has taught constitutional law to students such as Barack Obama, Ted Cruz, Elena Kagan, and Chief Justice John Roberts. And as we just heard, former Inspector General Joel Brenner, and now it's your turn to take a constitutional law class with Professor Tribe. Joining us now is Lawrence Tribe, Harvard Law School professor of constitutional law. He is the <coughs> co-author of To End a Presidency, The Power of Impeachment. Professor Tribe, I give you uh, the lecture hall for uh, can the president shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and the Manhattan District Attorney simply has to look the other way? Well, the answer is no. <laughs> we don't have a constitution, thank goodness in which the president is that much above the law. But in fact, the position that his lawyers were taking today in the federal court filing is even more extreme than that. They have taken the position that the president's company cannot be investigated, that those who may have conspired with him to commit financial and other crimes cannot be investigated, that the whole state proceeding must be stopped in its tracks. Among other things, there is a federal law going all the way back to the founding, actually to 1793. It's called the Anti-Injunction Act. And it says that no federal court can interfere with an ongoing state proceeding. So that when the judge finally has to rule on this outlandish claim that you cannot investigate criminality, on the part of the president, his company, and his cronies, the judge will have the obligation under the Anti-Injunction Act, 28 U.S.C. 2283, uh, to dismiss the case, because it is not permissible for a federal court. It's a principle, basically, of states' rights, believe it or not. It's not permissible for a federal court to mess around with an ongoing state criminal proceeding. Simple as that. So, and so uh, what's a, professor? Say, what's if, if, if that yeah. lawsuit would it be different if that lawsuit had been filed in New York State Court? 
Well, they would then be making an equally absurd argument, but mm -hmm. at least they would be in the right forum. Mm -hmm. They're trying to say that the state courts uh, have to be kicked out of the picture because, after all, the president is a federal official. That doesn't immunize him from state process. It doesn't immunize him from state proceedings. There are only very limited exceptions to this Anti-Injunction Act. The only one that could conceivably be relevant would be the civil rights laws. The civil rights laws, if the president said, this lawsuit that's being brought against me by Cy Vance violates my First Amendment rights or my religious freedom. Of course, it doesn't. But if he made that argument, there'd be a kind of window that he could try to climb through. But in a case I argued in one in the Supreme Court called Pennzoil v. Texaco in 1987, the U.S. Supreme Court said on behalf of one company that had lost a big judgment in a state court that it couldn't run off to federal court to kind of interrupt the state proceeding. The only way to get federal review of a state judgment is to let the state proceeding run its course and then take your chances with asking the U.S. Supreme Court to review the result. But the most important point, even more important than the fact that they've, you know, gone to the wrong court in order to try to hoodwink the judicial system, the most important point is that they have taken this outlandish position that says the president and all those around him are above the law. They can't be investigated for any crime, no matter how serious, until the president is out of office. Well, he's basically inviting the country to kick him out of office so that he can be held accountable to the law. And I think that's very kind of him, but I doubt that that's his intention. It's not a coincidence that this happens on the same day that the whistleblower issue arises. Because in that case, as you point out, there is an odd provision that doesn't allow for any judicial review. So we have the president taking the extraordinary position by indirection through the acting director of national intelligence, that he can withhold intelligence information of an urgent kind that goes to the security of the nation from the intelligence committees of Congress, even though an act of Congress says that that's where the whistleblower should go. And it's clear that his position now is, nobody can do anything to me. They can't touch me. I have Article 2 on my side. I can do what I want. Congress can't touch me. They can't ask questions of anyone who's ever worked with me or anyone who's had anything to do with me. The state courts can't investigate me. The federal government can't indict me. And, you know, Nancy Pelosi doesn't want to impeach me. So I'm, I'm home free and I can get away with murder. That can't be the law in the United States. That's not why we fought a revolution against a king just in order to get a tyrant. It's astonishing, and hopefully this will finally wake people up and realize this guy has got to go. The, the president's lawyers uh, put this in writing in, in their complaint today. They said, state and local prosecutors have massive incentives to criminally investigate the president to advance their careers or to damage a political opponent. Uh, we've had uh, apparently 230 years of this massive incentive that has never incentivized a local prosecutor before. Well, we have typically selected presidents who are not criminals. Uh, this time, we may have missed the mark, and we've selected a president who seems to know no bounds. He violates the emoluments clauses. He enriches himself at the expense of American taxpayers. He takes money from foreign governments in order to benefit himself. He bends policy in the direction of those governments, whether it's Saudi Arabia or another country. Uh, to enhance his own wealth. And now we understand he may have been making some kind of deal with Ukraine, perhaps uh, to get information of a negative kind about Joe Biden's son in exchange for aid to Ukraine. It's treachery, if not treason, and it's bribery, and it's unacceptable.
Professor Lawrence Tribe, thank you very much for joining us tonight. We all thank feel you. a little bit smarter now having shared some time with you. Thank you very much, Professor. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.